Hello, I'm Hatrix, and by seeing these two icons, you can maybe guess what I'm gonna talk about in this video. And let me start by saying this is not a build guide, it's not a theory crafting in-depth video, it's just to raise awareness or talk about the nice interaction that between skills we now have in Season 9 that we didn't have uh, before. It's also five skills I found interesting and I'm more likely to put into my builds and even maybe build around. And by that, I want to show this. Maybe there's even a skill I have missed, but then let me know in the comments. And if you haven't guessed it already, it is the skills that beforehand said that a skill were transformed into another one. So for example, Lava Lash beforehand, it got transformed into Ice Lash. This means that if you wanted to play with Ice Lash, you could not also play with Lava Lash. And that means this Ice Lash were balanced around you only having one Lava Lash. But now, you can actually have both. This means rotation change a lot. There's a lot more interactions in the Lava Lash com uh, combined with Ice Lash. The cooldowns are six seconds. You can even reduce them more with the hasty enchant. This means that your rotation can now look like Lava Lash, Ice Lash, Storm Strike, Repeat. This you couldn't do before. This uh, back then you had to like fill in other stuff. I didn't mention uh, Lava Sweep in this video because it's two-handed. So I, and I think this is like a good skill in itself. And these are more one-handed focused. So I wanted to put in some interaction for each of these uh, skills I'm going to show. We have the lever fuel one. This is only if you can have some beneficial things to spend your fingers of frost procs on between the uh, cooldowns. Then we have molten earth. This is mostly if the dots stacks or there's initial hit of damage. I haven't tested it, so I don't know. And then we have the explosive charges. And this is actually interesting because the delay is three seconds and you can even reduce it. This means that you can have a explosive charge go off uh, each three seconds. And this, what I'm heard from people, is actually a pretty strong, uh, strong talent. So that's a very nice interaction. This is probably my favorite interaction because some of the talents you get out of it are so strong, like Molten Core. The benefits are so strong in itself. Also, Redication, so much spell haste. And now you can prog it twice as often, so you can probably even have it up 100% of the time when you have both of the corruptions. So if you don't know, the there was a World Forge Mystic Enchant in previous seasons that changed your corruption to do fire damage instead and have some extra benefit. So, But now you can have both corruptions, and this means that now we have a lot of different swings where you can just have both of your corruptions up. You can even scale it with haste with a talent. And you can just get a lot of procs from stuff. We also talked about the corrupt the shift interaction in the cast build video, and the paralysis. How do you pronounce that? Uh, so you get the uh, you don't use the everlasting corruption, but you use Pyroblast instead to refresh it. If you do a Pyroblast build, this is also pretty beneficial if you're doing the Warden of Demon Reach uh, Arctic, uh, and you can just if you have this is a legendary, of course. This is not anything you can just put in your build. And you can maybe weave in soul fires. It's not that uh, good of a benefit, but just having ref the refresh part is pretty strong if you roll it. Also, shadow kindling. Uh, I haven't uh, played much with this, but it's pretty strong. Just having the extra crit and damage. Flameborn is one of the, in my opinion, the stronger ones. If you can have a nice refresh for your corruption, and you can get like sixty percent crit for your conflag, like conflag, and just having you don't have to think about being crit capped at all, and can just focus on pure damage. This is so strong for conflict builds. Also gonna look into this how I'm gonna put it into a conflict emulate build when I get to round fear crafting that build. And then we have the burst of flames also go nice in hand with the paralyzed but also in other builds. Mostly combine these two together. So just corruptions and you're getting the double the procs and getting them proc faster is just such a huge difference when you're building around these two skills. Then we have penance. I didn't play this at all back when it was released. It seemed pretty fun. I've seen someone doing heroic mythic raiding with it in TBC. It seemed pretty good. Uh, but the most component here I'm gonna take is the penance because penance is it's not a clunky skill to use in raids, but it has a long cooldown, so you cannot really be spamming it. You have to weave it in with other things. But what if that if you can reduce this cooldown and you could always be casting penance, then maybe there's actually a reason to to build around this and actually focus your build around it so you're always just spending, spamming penance and getting all of the benefits all the time. So I haven't looked much into it. This is some of the, the things uh, I found when I looked into penance. There are probably a lot more. 
and some other people that are much, much more into this kind of healer knows more about it. This is the one I've heard about that people were doing, the circle of healing, so actually getting some AoE damage from the uh, missiles. This combining with, I think there was one, maybe I don't have it here, where you get the more challenge time and you get more uh, procs, more of the, you get one more missile. So you can actually maybe with the 12 seconds delay and you reduce the cooldown a bit, then you can maybe be looking at um, spamming pennants all the time and just be circle of healing. Uh, so quite an interesting uh, way to do a healer when you can have both of the pennants. So you don't have to have the downtime. And probably the strongest next to corruption and by hands down probably the strongest i mean emulate with the old elemental destruction this were balanced around that your emulate can transform into emulate but now you can actually have two emulates the downside is i mean the downside you, you can work around it but you have to spend combo points so you have to have combo points in some way before you pull the bus what does this mean the strongest interaction is the elemental destruction this is the periodic damage from elemental destruction legendary that increase your damage of the immolate. This is kind of slow. I mean, it, it's it's okay fast when you have the flame shark, but it, only with these two, it's kind of slow. But if you have immol the other immolate as well, then you can be looking at having uh, full stacks on each of your conflex. Also, probably other ways to do this, but uh, having two immolates will just make this go so much faster. And this is such a, hic a big uh, damage multiplier for it. And also ways to refresh both of them. So you just have, if you're melee build or chaos build build, you can have both of the emulates running, not even like abusing it with conflict and stuff. And you can just have some fire dot uh, running on the bus for free. And you have uh, refreshing both of them. Same goes for infinite burn. Not going to dive too much into it in this one. But yeah, it's something to keep in mind of when you're rolling emulate or just uh, weaving it in that you can have both of them. And then we have the most fun, I guess, uh, in my opinion. It's the Wind Rager. This were from the Wind Rager legendary. Uh, so, and Storm Strike were the transformed version. And also, Wind Strike were nerfed back then. Before, when it was, was released, it was actually 4 seconds and was so broken in so many ways. It was the new tier 0 build at that time. And yeah, so there's a lot of restrictions. Also, while Wind Rager were active, you Titan script were reduced. This is actually not a thing anymore, so you can actually just be titan scribbing with these two skills and hitting with both weapons. Such a fun way to build it. Have a cooldown so you can even fill in more stuff, and you can have some cool prog effects on your weapons. Also, haven't looked much into the lightning blade, it's just a nice addition. It's legendary, it's harder to roll. I, I mean, same goes for wind strike, and but it has the cooldown, so you have to play around this a bit more compared to just spamming these two and reducing the cooldown. So what interactions are there with Storm Strike? The most main interaction, I think, is the Stormborn. So when you have Elemental Mastery and Shamanistic uh, Rage, you do a big, and I mean really big, damage uh, in Frontal AoE. This has a 3 second cooldown, but if you only had either Storm Strike uh, or Wind Strike, this one, this, it wouldn't be really that good because you had to wait 6 or 5 seconds and not getting most uptime on this and most damage but if you have both of them and can swap between them in the rotation this you can have each 3 second almost and don't have that much downtime so it's a lot more fun to use also pack alpha this is not the strongest thing to do anymore it's only the haste and some beneficial from having the wolves but it's quite fun that you can reduce it so much and also as you saw before combining it with the level and ice slash actually pretty strong and this were buffed this season so it doesn't have any restrictions now compared to last season and also with the uh, raging winds i think you had some time downtime where you use bloodlust uh blood first with the um, wind strike whirlwind and then blood first but now you can actually when you can storm strike i think you can are close to like wind striking whirlwind storm strike whirlwind and just keep up for aoe so that is also something to look into because you can now use both of them and also, last thing, this, I have no idea if this is strong or not, but it's fun interaction, because now you can do a rotation with this, because before you really couldn't because of the cooldowns again, but now you can actually do like, use this flame shark, then use uh, two or three charges and then refresh it with storm strike, and then you can spam backstab and use both of your storm strikes to refresh it. So very fun interaction. I'm definitely going to look into this at some point and see how much the backstab can do. So that was the five. That's a, <laughs> I guess it's for the better clickbait of YouTube. And I really couldn't. I mean, I mean, I really couldn't. This is also an honorable mention because I really couldn't uh, get much of a use of having two arcane missiles. In this case, the main reason would be 
if you're doing both of them, but I don't know really why you should or wanted to, because you can have the 8% increased damage from swapping between them. That is for you to figure out. I'm just putting it out there. The main reason thing I can think of is when we get into the emulate snapshot, if it still works in the way I think it does, then you have two options to uh, getting 8% fire damage before emulate. But uh, yeah, so you use arcane missiles, you get 8% damage from one of these two, depending on what RK missiles you use. And then your emulate that you snapshot on the bus and keep refreshing has 8% increased damage. That is pretty strong. That is how uh, people did it back in other seasons with snapshotting emulate. So keep it in mind if you're rolling shadow missiles or RK missiles, have them for both of the uh, the possibility of getting this, uh, the combo, I guess you can say. And then the last honorable mention is the Winds of Winter. I haven't played much with it. Last time, again, Cone of Cold transformed into Winds of Winter, so you couldn't spam both, but now you actually have even more AoE by spamming both of them. This I actually don't know where it's from, Glacial Spike. I think it's an old World Watch AoE, and probably transformed Cone of Cold as well, so now you can actually be spamming all of them, and Cone of Cold has some really insane scaling multipliers to really pump out damage with it. So that is gonna be, that is probably also a pretty cool melee version to be playing, but the, that is just to throw it out when you're wanting to build this. And that is it. Thanks for watching the video. I have my melee build guide uh, coming out uh, soon, TM, when I get around to it. Molten Core were just released, so I also have a Molten Core video coming out with the first Heroic Clear we did. And yeah, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.